Hey everybody and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by the Minecrafters. This is Captain Jack and in this short tutorial we're going to be talking about Cryothium brought to you by Thermal Foundation. <laughs> Alright, so what in the world is cryothium? Let's learn how to make it first before I explain it. You're going to need a snowball, some either nitrate or saltpeter, some redstone, and some of this stuff called blizz powder. And together, with these four items, you will be able to create cryothium dust. Now one of the first problems you're going to run into when you are trying to create cryothium is getting this blizz powder. And if you check the recipe, you will notice that blizz powder can be obtained by smashing a blizz rod. Smashing a blizz rod in your um, shapeless crafting grid will give you two blizz powder, while pulverizing will give you four blizz powder, and also a 50% chance to gain a snowball, which is fantastic. However, the problem is, where on earth do you find these blizz rods? Well, the answer is a blizz. And I have one here walled off. He's looking very lonely. Um, but this is a blizz, and if you kill the blizz, it has a chance of dropping this blizz rod. Um, the blizzes can be found in biomes that have those icy trees that are just loaded with ice. They're not normal snow biomes, and unfortunately, they're extremely rare. So, that for it presents a problem right away. How do we get this blizz powder without having to worry about going and finding one of these stupid blizzes and making a mob farm and so on and so forth? There is an easier way, but it is also a more expensive way. Alright, if you choose to craft blizz powder, the first thing that you are going to need is an aqueous accumulator. This requires no power and simply requires water to be in two adjacent sides of the aqueous accumulator. This is going to cause water to fill up inside of this machine here, and we are going to use water in the next machine, which is the Glacial Precipitator. This machine is going to require water, so I have this configured with some pressurized fluid conduits to accept water, and there we go. Along with a little bit of power, this machine is going to start creating snowballs. It can also create some of these other things here, but we will need snowballs for the blizz powder, so that's what we're going to make. Next, we're going to combine redstone inside a magma crucible to create this stuff called destabilized redstone. And with it, we are finally going to make blizz powder. So, we're going to have another fluid transposer. We're going to put our snowballs up top here. And the destabilized redstone combined with the snowball is going to create blizz powder. And so we have come full circle here. And now we have the proper materials that, so that we can make cryothium dust. All right, so what do we do with this cryothium dust once we have it? Well, the first thing that you can do with it is that you can craft these two thermal expansion upgrades for the dynamos. The first one is an augment coil. It's a uh, cryo coil regulator, and the second one is a flux amplifier. And uh, if you shift mouse over these two items, you will be able to see exactly what they do. Now, these are level 3 upgrades, and I'll explain what that means in just one second. Let me show you the recipes for them. We have some cryothium, some electrum, and a redstone transmission coil. We'll give you the, uh, or, uh, the regulator, and uh, for this one you need some silver, a redstone transmission coil, and there's some more cryothium dust. So you can make, the, make these uh, pretty powerful upgrades for the dynamos, and what they do is uh, basically, I'll take this one out for now and we'll just go with the flux amplifier here. So if I shift the mouse over this, it says that it requires the previous levels to be installed. So you see that this is putting out the standard 80 RF per tick with lava inside a magmatic dynamo, okay? And if I take this one out, it does nothing. And uh, it does say that you need the previous levels installed. So if I go ahead and take this one here, this is the level 1. You'll, know, you'll see a noticeable difference in uh, the energy output of this magmatic dynamo. It um, cranks up to 640 RF per tick, which is pretty significant, okay? So the same thing goes for these augment uh, coil secondary gearbox and so on and so forth. Um, it will increase the efficiency of the fuel, which is really awesome. Um, so it will use far less lava if you have these level 3 um, coils installed. Uh, but again, you will need to make sure, and I'm just clicking on the augmentation um, 
GUI button over here. You will you will need to make sure that you have um, the previous two levels installed. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay. So this one will only add 160. This one will add three to make it to 320, and this one will bring it all the way up to 640. So that's one of the things that you can do with Cryothium Dust. Another thing that you can do with the Cryothium Dust is that you can smash it and squish it and squeeze it into gelid Cryothium. And this is probably what you're after if you're watching this tutorial. What I have here is a very simple setup. I have an aqueous accumulator down here. I have a glacial precipitator making my snowballs. I have a magma crucible smashing my redstone and they're being combined in this fluid transposer right here. Now, I have this little uh, Ender IO crafter, and it's crafting cryothium dust. And if I was to uh, accept items from the bottom side here, um, we're going to take our cryothium dust and we are going to smash it into gelid cryothium, which is going right into this um, big tank here. And gelid cryothium is going to be used for a couple things, and I'll show you what you can do with it. Now, I did say there was only a couple things that you can do with it, but there's more than that, really. Um, one of the things is that you can use it inside this compression dynamo, and uh, you can use it as a coolant alongside uh, various types of fuel. This is hap happens to be the most, um, will give you the most RF per tick. You can put a whole load of stuff inside of this um, machine here. Um, but gelid cryothium is 10 times more effective than water as a coolant inside a compression dynamo, and uh, that's just one of the simple uses that you can use it for. All right, now we're going to discuss one quick thing before we go over big reactors because gelid cryothium is the most efficient, um, most conductive, um, best fluid that you could possibly put inside of your passively cooled big reactor. And if you're not sure how big reactors work, you can check out our video in the description below. It's, uh, it's awesome. Um, one of the things you're going to need to know about gelid cryothium is the way it behaves when placed in the world because it's going to be really important when uh, filling up your big reactor. So if I take a bucket of water and drop it here, you'll see that it cr kind of creates like a source block and it just flows down very nicely into here. But if I take a bucket of gelid cryothium, what's going to happen is it's going to almost behave like a block of sand or gravel in that it will slowly fall down and it will not create source blocks. So that's really important when dealing with gelid cryothium because it makes filling up your big reactors a huge pain. All right, so when you say huge pain, Captain, exactly what do you mean? All right, let's go ahead and try to fill this big reactor up with gelid cryothium. I'm gonna place a bucket here and we're gonna watch what happens. First of all, it's gonna create snow because the stuff is freezing cold and it's also very dangerous. You shouldn't swim in it, it will hurt you. All right, so there we go. As you can see, it doesn't create a source block. All it creates is problems, okay? More money, more problems. So it will take a lot of buckets and a lot of patience to fill up this entire thing. So what we can actually do is we can use this thing called a flood floodgate from uh, BC Factory, and we can attach it to um, a Tesseract or any type of um, wireless fluid transfer or even uh, manual fluid transfer um, like these um, pressurized fluid conduits here. It doesn't matter. I'm just using a uh, creative tank. And what the floodgate will do is it will um, help you fill up the big reactor with gelid cryothium without having to worry about placing buckets all over the place. So the floodgate is uh, um, a really, really simple tool that can be used very effectively to fill up your big reactor. And as you can see, um, it's just slowly filling this thing up um, one by one by one. And uh, when it's done, we will be able to close up the big reactor. And uh, there we go. Bam. It's done. So I'm going to take this away. I'm going to put this down. And there we go. It's all full of gelid cryothium. Now, if you want to empty your big reactor because you're expanding, you're going on uh, to bigger and better things, you can also use the Buildcraft pump or probably any other kind of pump to pump the gelid cryothium back out of the big reactor so that you actually don't lose any of it. So the floodgate is going to be a really, really um, important tool, um, especially for those huge reactors that you guys might have out there um, to, for filling this stuff up with the best coolant in the game. All right, so there's a couple more uses that you can use gelid cryothium for, and we'll tell you about them and then wrap this baby up. As I just explained, gelid cryothium is very dangerous, and if any mob were to fall into it, Oh, they will turn into a snowman and they will die. And if you're quick enough, 
you actually might be able to safari net one of these snowmen and uh, use it for morph or something else. Uh, but yes, gelid cryothium is just as dangerous as lava and it is very fun to play with. And last but not least, there are some nifty little things that you can do with gelid cryothium. And uh, there have been uh, little machines made out of these things. You can go ahead and look them up for yourself um, in order to harvest certain materials. Uh, but if you place lava and it uh, flows into gelid cryothium, what is going to happen here is that it will turn into cobblestone. And the cobblestone um, just may actually turn into uh, obsidian. And that has happened here why is it not happening? I'm not entirely sure. Actually, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make this flow a little bit farther here. There we go, obsidian. Okay, so gelid cryothium it kind of acts like uh, like water and lava. So there's that. And then if we take some uh, energized glowstone and put it up there, and it, when it interacts with gelid cryothium, it will turn into a block of glowstone. So those are a couple neat little uses for gelid cryothium. And that's going to be it for this little tutorial. I hope you've learned everything there is possibly to know about gelid cryothium. If there's something that I forgot, please go ahead and post it in the comments below. And I hope you enjoy the best big reactor coolant in the game. And also, check us out on all of our social media outlets listed here. And as always, guys, stay poised.